I don't want to fix the problem. I just want to complain. Do you know what the most important shape in history is? The square. The foundations to our homes, buildings, and industries. Society would collapse without the square. But do you know what the most important food in history is? Bread. Not only is it the most consumed food in the world, it has formed communities, sparked revolutions, brought forth reforms to improve socioeconomic mobility. So why am I talking about this? Because you have the ability to bring these concepts together to bring forth a better future, a better you, a better us. I'm talking about square bread. So why square bread? First, let's talk about why you should make your own bread. Well, it's easy, it's fresh, tastes way better than that Wonder Bread you've been buying all your life. But why make it in the shape of a square? Well, again, it's easy, hardly anything to it. Perfect shape for that grilled cheese or when you want it to be fancy and make it look pretty. Or if you're a monster that doesn't eat crust, it's much less wasteful. But I promise you, you make this, you'll like the crust. So to get started, of course, you're gonna need a loaf pan. I got here a 13 by four by four Pullman pan or shoku pan. I think that's the Japanese way of saying it. Where we have our pan, we got our lid, which creates our, which creates our square bread. Like a rectangle. If you ever wanted to know how much dough you need for your loaf pans, just involve some basic math. So something like this, 13 by four by four, you want your dough to be around 1,000 grams, 1,100 grams. If you have a smaller one, the nine by four by four, that's about 800 to 900 grams of dough. Or if you have a common loaf pan like this, this is a nine by five by two and a half inch loaf pan, you want your dough to be around 700 to 800 grams. Obviously you won't get your squared loaf here, but you're still making fresh bread, so you still get points for that. Now this may be a lot of math for you, but with this newfound knowledge, you could take any bread recipe that you find and turn it into a loaf using your loaf pan of choice. Just adjust the recipe accordingly so you end up with the right amount of dough you need for each loaf pan. Simple math. But for today, this dough is gonna do a simple white bread loaf. So we're gonna start off with 600 grams of bread flour. Like always, if all you got is all purpose, go right ahead. 10 grams of instant yeast, 10 grams of salt, 30 grams of sugar. We'll whisk in our dry ingredients together. We'll add 200 grams of warm water, 160 grams of warm milk. We'll get that in our mixer with our dough hook and let it rip. Once our dough starts to come together, somewhat of a cohesive ball, we are going to add in 50 grams of room temp butter in batches and let it coat our dough. You might need to scrape off butter on the side every now and then. Try to clear our mixing bowl and get everything in as much as possible. All right, so let's check on our dough. Now normally, I don't like giving a time of how long it takes to knead. So while you do it on your machine, depending on different speeds, or if you want to knead it by hand. Time is not a good factor, but we will see by our gluten development. You can see here, by pulling apart, it kind of tears pretty easily, which means we do not have enough gluten development. So we'll need it a little bit longer so it gets nice and stretchy. All right, take another look at our dough. You can see enough gluten for it to clear out the mixing bowl. By here, see how much stretch we get. So you can see light through it, you know you're good. Just get this into a nice little hot bowl. All right, the real reason why you wanna bake your own bread, so you can do this. That's a good ball of dough. So we just get a little bit of grease, reuse our mixing bowl, plop that in, cover this up. So we're gonna set this aside and let this proof, which means we'll let our dough relax and we'll let the yeast start its work. And then we'll wait until our dough gets doubled in size, which could take anywhere from an hour to two hours, depending on a lot of conditions. If you have a proof function in your oven, you could use that somewhere warm on the countertop is fine or in the oven with the light on, seems to do pretty good. We'll come back to this after it grows. So it's been about an hour now. We could see our dough has doubled in size. We'll deflate it, yank it out. So with all bread, when we make our dough, have our first proof, and then we shape it to get it proof again, and we bake it. Luckily, when we're making a loaf, the shaping is very easy. So how do we shape this? Well, we basically just need to get our dough from here into here. So using our length, this being 13 inches long, we're gonna want to roll out our dough to a rectangular shape that follows that length. Trying to keep this as squared and rectangular as we can. 
the more even, the easier. And if not, not a big deal. It's only bread. Pull on the corners. That's uh, basically the same size, maybe a little bit bigger, no problem. So we'll grease our loaf pan. Then we're just gonna roll our dough into a log, like so. Gently get this inside. Spray our lid a little bit. We are going to get this to proof again. We want this to rise till it gets to, I don't know, half an inch away from the top here. Not so much that it touches here, but just underneath. Even if you forget about it and it gets to that spot, it's not a big deal. But, so we're gonna put this away, we'll cover this, let this rise, then we'll get ready for baking. So it's been about an hour. You can see our dough has risen to where we want it to be, just under the lid. So we're gonna be baking this at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 40 minutes. As long as we get our internal temp to 205 degrees, we know it was done. Obviously, if you don't have this, our bread will just rise, kind of overhang normally for that classic bread, but having our Pullman loaf pan with our lid stops the bread from rising past the lip here and keeping it flat and keeping the perfect shape. So we're gonna throw this in the oven. Hopefully uh, this turns out okay. All right, so we're at the 40 minute mark. See how this turned out. Look at that, it looks great already. Let's see where we're at. Our internal temp, 205, 206, good. So while I would love to cut into this now and eat this bread, we are going to need to let it cool off completely. Let it get down to room temperature. Cooling rack of some sort, dump out our bread. By cooling it off, it allows the steam inside to release slowly and properly as our bread is still doing the finishing touch, it's still cooking the way it needs to. Because if we cut it now, we'll just get very mushy bread. Nobody wants mushy bread. So we'll let this cool off and then we'll see how this turns out. All right, so our bread has cooled down. Now we can slice it. If you don't have a bread knife, I highly recommend. Let's see how this goes. Oh yeah. Take a look at this guy. I mean, not perfectly square, but still foundational. How does this taste? This is the end piece. Nobody likes the end piece. Not when you bake your own bread. That's some good bread. Dare I say, great bread. So that's really it. Simple slice of bread with a simple shape. There's endless possibilities to be had with this. Well, maybe not endless, but a lot, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So give this a shot. Start making your own bread for a better future for you, for me, for us.